First up, we have Sharon Kufeld, who is from the Oaks in Santa Paula. Hi. Um, wow. My dad was a Marine, and he taught me always to be prepared. And when I was in the military, I was trained to always be prepared. And then for five years, I volunteered in Palm Springs with the CERT pro program, the Citizens Emergency Response Training Team. And I was prepared, except in Palm Springs, we were on vacation when the fire took our home, my dad's and mine, completely gone. And if we hadn't been gone, we would have died in the fire. So that was a blessing. There was no evacuation. So living in Santa Paula, my dad passed away last year. Um, I'd been thinking, oh, I got to get my cert stuff together. You know, I, my, my cert backpack was in, in the garage and all these things. And I went in from putting up Christmas decorations to take a nap. And then I was going to take a shower and change my clothes and all those things. And all of a sudden, there's banging on my door. And it's the neighbor. And he says, there's fire coming. We have to go now. And I'm like, I'd heard the helicopters and I'd heard the sirens, but I hadn't really connected it. And he was like, we have to go now. And so I'm like, OK. So I get up, and I throw on the dirty sweats that I'd been wearing for two days working in the yard. And I grabbed the teddy bear that the hospice people made for me out of my dad's favorite shirt. And I grabbed the little box, the little red box that had all of the only things I had left from my life from the other fire. And I grabbed my passport and my purse, and I went to the car. And I was going to go knock on the neighbors, the other neighbor's door, because they have an invalid husband. And my roommate called from the hospital. She's a labor and delivery nurse at the hospital up the hill. And she said, leave now. We're talking about evacuating the hospital. Leave now. So I was like, OK. So I grabbed my computer on my way out, my laptop, and I grabbed something off the back of my door. I didn't know what it was. And I grabbed her computer from the house, locked the doors, and got in my car, and I drove away. When I got to the freeway, there was this orange glow, and I could see some flames you know, up 150. And so I started heading towards Ventura, called my friend and said, there's a fire. I'm evacuating to your house. I hope you're home. And um, I stopped at uh, Peck Road, no, Briggs Road. And I looked, and the fire was like 10 times bigger. And I could see the flames coming. So I make it to Ventura. And um, I get to her house, and I look at my things, and I realize I didn't bring any clothes. <laughs> but I, I had the most important things to me, which, you know, that teddy bear and my little red box and my passport and my purse. So I also, what I'd grabbed in my arm was my nightgown, because it was on the back of my door. So I get to her house, and I said, oh, Cindy, I didn't, I'm sorry. I smell really bad. I, I, you know. She said, that's OK. I put on my nightgown. and she took all my clothes, my socks, everything, every stitch, and put it in the washing machine. So we're kind of hanging out a little bit. She made me some tea, and we're figuring out where she's going to sleep where. And I'm smelling smoke, and I'm smelling more smoke, because she lives off of Seward in Ventura. And we're settling out where to go, and then the, the power goes out, right? So all my clothes are in the washing machine with soap. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just settling down, and I was like, I'm going to sleep in her son's room. And it's like, OK. And I just pull down the covers on the bed, and there's this banging on the door. The fire's at the end of the street. We have to go now. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> I run out in the street and I look and there's you know the flames. It looks like the fire fall at Yosemite. It's just, just coming down the hill towards the end of our street at her house. So I look at her and then by then I'm coughing from the smoke and I said, Cindy, I'm leaving now. And she says, well, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to evacuate. I said, just save yourself. It doesn't matter the other stuff. But you know, get out. And um, so I drove to my friend Michael's house. And I get to his house and I'm wearing my shoes, no socks, and, and my nightgown, which luckily was a big, fat flannel nightgown, so it wasn't so bad. And um, I get to his house, and he's a bachelor, and he lives in a senior thing, and he doesn't even have a couch. 
And so he graciously gave me his bed, and he slept on the floor on a pile of quilts. And uh, the next morning, after we get the, the uh, power back on, and I got my cell phone charged, I called Cindy and said, is there any chance you got power? She said, oh yeah, the power came on an hour ago. Your clothes are in the dryer. Thank you. <laughs> and so Michael is, he loves to eat out. So he has no food in the house. Now I grew up, you know, with a military dad saying be prepared and, and all of the be prepared stuff. So when we were snowed in in Atlanta five years ago, or I guess yeah, maybe eight years ago now, um, my housemate and I, we had plenty of food for 10 days, right? We, maybe not the first things we would choose to eat, but we had food. I look at Michael's refrigerator, and I'm like, oh no, I hope Cindy can make breakfast. So I go over to Cindy's house and we have breakfast and I get my clothes and the smoke is so bad. I decided to head to the uh, church in Ventura, the Unitarian Universalist Church. So I went there and people were coming in and they were calling people and they were, people offered rooms. So I was, um, invited to uh, the home of one of our uh, church members. And I was so grateful as somebody said, all my stuff that I have is in my car. And um, I tend to, since the fire to keep a lot of stuff in my car anyway, since that other fire. It just what I had left was what I had in my car and what I had in my suitcase when I was traveling. And so I hadn't realized why I keep so much stuff in my car until probably this moment. It's like, oh yeah, from that other fire, what I had left was in my car. So I was very grateful because these people live in a gated community and I didn't have to worry about the things sitting in my car. And I was evacuated for 12 days and it was two more days after that before I could go home and sleep in my room. And we're still cleaning up smoke residue. Um, very fortunate because our, our home is safe. I did find burned out cinders in the yard and, and um, you know, we're all dealing with the air and um, I have degenerative disc disease and I'm not supposed to lift things ever. And so of course evacuating and then coming back and then cleaning and I found myself in the emergency room on uh, uh, the night before New Year's Eve and um, I'm getting better. But I have to say this was my third fire and the first one I lost all my hair and the second one I lost everything that I owned just about. And this one, the only thing I lost was um, a lot of sleep <laughs> and um, a pain-free back. So I'm very grateful, but I just, it was amazing to have all that cert preparation and then walk out of the house and have no clothes. <laughs> I was like, what were you thinking? Because I had a suitcase packed. I didn't think of taking the suitcase. It had sweats, it had toothbrush, it had all those things in it. It was in my room even, and it, all he would have had to do was grab it, but I got the most important thing, which was the bear that was my dad. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you.